There are three elements that make being in Lausanne a perfect place to be. We have great colleagues. We're well resourced in terms of equipment. And the quality of the students in Lausanne, I think, is absolutely exceptional. The collaborations in the Faculty of Geosciences and the Environment are really interesting because the faculty mixes geographers and geologists together to understand the processes in the history of our Earth as well as the people who live on the Earth. Working at the University of Lausanne and the Faculty of Geosciences and Environment is really wonderful because um, people are very open-minded, they're very interested in communication and collaboration, and there's a real desire to have a positive impact on the world around us. The research that my group is doing helps us understand biodiversity as well as the processes of evolution, which are really important in a modern context. Some of our most exciting findings have been studying early arthropod fossils that are exceptionally preserved, which means we can see soft tissues and complete anatomy of 500 million year old arthropods. We have an amazing suite of analytical equipment available to us, and we've developed a method to understand what types of animals and tissues are not making it into the rock record, combining an angle of experimental taphonomy to use living arthropods to understand the ancient animal fossil record. The focus of my research is igneous petrology, a very exciting project is, was just recently funded by the International Continental Drilling Program. We will drill kilometer long holes into the lower crust in the Alps to understand the most important transition on the Earth from the crust to the mantle. It's an interdisciplinary project between different countries which will get new insights how the continental crust forms, and this is important for a better understanding of cycling of CO2, the interaction with the biosphere, with the atmosphere and the hydrosphere. The most exciting thing we've been doing recently is developing a very old dating technique based on defects in quartz minerals to record the temperature changes in rocks that we can use to understand how mountain ranges have formed and when valleys have been formed and to what extent a changing climate is important in that process. And in some environments we've found that actually it's more driven by tectonics, but in other settings we find that actually glaciation is very important in driving the rate of exhumation. Most of my work at the moment is concerned with the fundamental science of the areas that are created when glaciers and ice sheets uh, retreat, so proglacial margins. We've been able to collaborate with a uh, hydroelectric power company We're using their sediment intake volume data in parallel with reconstruction of how much water these glaciers are producing. And from that, we can start to think about, well, what does that mean as glaciers retreat, not just in terms of their hydrology, but in terms of groundwater dynamics and the role of ecosystem development in these sorts of environments. My research focuses on the social dimensions of environmental change in developing countries. In particular, I look at phenomena like fire or invasive species, and I look at how history, politics, socioeconomics affect how the groups of people negotiate and collaborate about those environmental phenomena. My current research looks at the rainforests of central Vietnam, which have been affected by deforestation due to war, logging and agriculture, as well as a plantation boom in exotic Australian acacias. And so we're really looking at the ecology, the social dynamics, and the questions of policy and governance in the, the dynamics of these rainforests. My work is on the social sciences of climate change. So I'm working on a project called Living Well Within Limits, where we're trying to understand uh, what are the resource use that people need to live well, and how we can deliver that in a very efficient and equitable way. And we did a big modeling exercise, and what we found is that if we use efficient technologies for this around the world, we can do this at 40% of our current energy use. We need to consider overconsumption, we need to consider underconsumption and poverty, and we also need to explore technological change and how to do that very efficiently in a high-tech way, it's easier to do it than in a low-tech way. The faculty by itself is a mix between social and natural sciences and this is the advance that we get uh, students aware on one hand on the physical processes, on the basics of physics and chemistry and biology to understand environmental change and on the other hand they get trained 
in the implications of uh, social aspects of climate change. I think that the students really benefit from being inspired by the professor's own research interests. There's a strong emphasis on fieldwork and in particular fieldwork in the Alps. So many of our students are really specialists in alpine environments and go on to careers related in that. Our research is really facilitated by the resources that the university, as well as the broader Swiss context, makes available to us, which allows us to basically put together exciting international teams of researchers to really address our research questions.